There's another article I saw about how uh, younger people are uh, starting to embrace socialism a lot more. And, uh, and you know, it's kind of a no-brainer. Of course we are. Younger people are living in... Uh, I think it, it, this article, which was written by uh, Jack Kelly, who's, who's sort of like a tech CEO kind of person... Um, basically wrote that, you know, we might be the first generation that uh, is, is living in worse condition than our parents. And it's probably true. I mean, if you look at, like, the history of things, right? Like, you had the World War II generation that came out of abject poverty from the Great Depression. Um, and, you know, the Great Depression kind of collapsed the economy. Everybody kind of had to uh, fend, for, fend for... I mean, they, and they didn't really fend for themselves. They, they collectively fended for each other. Uh, you know, everybody kind of had to take care of each other. And then when, once you kind of came out of that, we got into World War II, stabilized our economy, and then, um, and then you got to see... Uh, this uptick uh, in, in, in the American way of life with the white picket fence and the two-car garage and the suburban, you know, the, the expansion of the country and the and suburbs and white flight and all this other stuff, right? Um, and then you got into the, into the 80s where, where they started doing, you know, deregulation and, co- like, people started trusting corporations a lot more. And that, that generation did better than the generation that came out of World War II. Um, they're making a lot more money and they're, they're buying into and empowering more, more of the corporations than they are the people. Um, you know, so uh, that led to the system that we're in now and now we're in a system where like everybody I know is in debt. I'm in debt. Everybody's in debt. Student loans wasn't a thing. Like my parents, when they got when they came here, like that that was like a thing. I think we kind of had to figure out what, that student loans was going to be a thing. But my parents never had to deal with student loans um, until my sister and I went to college, and uh, you know I. I was dead broke for fucking years. Like, I had no money for a long time. Live with my parents. Because I just wanted to get rid of this debt. Just wanted to get rid of student loans. I didn't want them anymore. So, I basically... uh, I worked as much as I possibly could. And I threw, like, most of the money I made right into student loans for, like, three years after I got out of college. Um, eventually paid them off, but I mean, it it was it wrecked havoc on my relationships. Um, I, I was dating I was dating a girl at the time, and it's like it's super fucking difficult to go out on dates, like get dinner every weekend, go to a movie, like fucking plays, concerts. That wasn't something I was doing after I got out of college. I mean, shit, I don't I don't do that that often now. And I fucking love going to concerts. I love checking, especially like local concerts and stuff. Even that sometimes I don't get a chance to do because, you know, it's like, fuck, I could spend $10 on going to this concert and supporting my friends. But boy, howdy, I, I, I really like eating and staying alive. Like that's a situation that some people have to make. That's why part of the thing is like sometimes if, if you want to come see me live, if you want to come to see a show... And, and, you know, somebody emails me or messages me and says, hey, I really want to come, but I'm really strapped for cash. And, you know, five or ten dollars is a bit too much. I just say, just come. I'll put you on the list. I don't care. Have a good time. Meet some people. Get a drink. You know, if I have drink tab, I'll buy you a drink on, on the drink tab. That's fine. Just come and hang out. Have a good time. You can't fucking date when you're stuck in, in just this cycle of poverty. You can't fucking do that. It's really hard. It's really, really difficult to do that on a regular basis. You have no financial security. 
at all. This, it, uh, this generation has zero financial security. So of course we're going to look at this idea of socialism and be like, wait a minute. Capitalism is a system that's built on debt and social control that is uh, that is that is that that is sort of driven by the central focal point being that you are in debt to something else uh, that 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 you owe money so now the person that you owe money to is in total control of your life uh, and they get to determine like you basically strip your freedom away like capitalism is a system that has found a different way to uh, different way to uh, apply slavery into into the, the masses and socialism is a system where that's not a thing well I'm not going to get financially punished for wanting an education I'm not going to get financially punished for for but for needing to buy a new car I'm not going to get financially punished for wanting a good home to start a family. I'm not going to get financially punished for fucking getting sick. Holy shit. That sounds incredible. You mean I get to pursue my passions, create create long-lasting fundamental relationships that mean something, find purpose in my life? Holy shit. Of course we're going to go to that economic platform. Why the fuck wouldn't you? I mean, it's difficult enough to pay rent sometimes, you know, for, for certain people. And, and even moving, right? Like, some people get stuck in shitty situations um, because you can't afford to move. Because if you move, you got to pay a security deposit and then first month and last month's rent, which is like three times the amount of money that you have. So just, just in order to live, just in order to go to a new place, to try to have a better life for yourself you you're already in the hole like two grand and that's most of the money that you have and then there's the whole idea of moving itself right like most people have to hire movers that's a couple hundred bucks and really that system right there, this whole security deposit, first month, last month's rent, um, is, is, is a, I mean, it is a very individualistic uh, capitalist idea that's more about the, the landlord's wealth. It's about, it's about the, these landlords that want to make money, um, and they know people have to make money. Um, so, uh, you, you know, that's what they're going to go do, that they're, they're going to they're gonna push people into that. But what we want are more collectivist ideas. I think that's really what's the, what we're leaning towards is, hey, we want ideas um, where uh, we know that we are going to be taken care of. That's what we would like to see. And that's part of the thing of, like, you know, why you see people renting out houses with, you know, four or five of their friends. They're not buying the houses. They have to rent them out because those, those houses have cheaper rent. They might, you know, have the fucking utilities covered and you you see more of these sort of collectivist ideas you see more of these community driven homes uh, that are uh, uh, starting up here because that's what people want people don't want to the the individualism the the bravado that comes out with that the greed that surrounds any of that shit yeah we want to we want to be able to live in better homes oh socialism is going to be able to provide that with ideas like universal basic income and just fair housing laws holy fucking dicks really damn dude yeah let's fucking go do that they're stuck in debt from student loans when at the age of 18 at the age of 18 you can't drink or smoke but you can sign a financial document that lets the banks control your life great cool that's cool 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 That's so fucked up. We also, uh, this article, uh, this, uh, 
Jack Kelly fella uh, goes back and talks about how we have uh, a less potential for uh, ascertaining wealth, uh, wealth transfer specifically. Uh, we have less of that. We have less wealth transfer as a generation. So what does that mean? That means that, you know, when um, the, in the previous generations, uh, when, you know, either parents have passed away or uh, found, you know, like, hey, we want to condense our life uh, to a smaller place, we're, we're, we're not going to sell it. We're going to give this house to our kids uh, because we can't. Um, that's not particularly happening in our generation because even even this previous generation that, that was wealthy, that was doing really well for itself, uh, well, they can't deal with it. I mean, you know, you have the financial collapse, you have the markets that are going to be failing again. Uh, that's going to happen, you know, and, and they called for it. They called that the markets are going to collapse again, that the economy is going to collapse again. J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, uh, Wells Fargo, all of these big financial giants basically came out and said, hey, guess what? The markets are going to collapse and eh, we're probably going to be responsible for it. We're probably the reason why the markets are going to collapse, uh, but uh, fuck off. Uh, and and that, that means that people are going to fall on harder times. That means that they're going to have to dip into, you know, savings account, retirement accounts. We, and that means that this generation, our generation, doesn't have the same wealth trust that the prior generation had. The prior generation could look upon their parents and say, oh, that's really neat that you have a house and perhaps one day we can inherit that house. Uh, and if we want to, we can move into it and start a family in there uh, or we can sell it and, and you know, uh, uh, turn a profit on it and, uh, uh, you know, use it to invest in, in, in something else, use it to invest in a business, use it to invest in, uh, in, in our families or anything like that. We're not gonna have that opportunity. The capitalist system has not allowed you to do that. The capitalist system has pummeled us into debt. And of course, of course, of course, we're a generation that's like, wait a minute, there's a completely different system that's not going to crush me financially, that's not going to penalize me all the time. Of course, we're going to fucking go for it. Of course we are. Why would we be in this masochistic fucking economic system that could give two shits less about us? Let's go to that other idea. Let's vote for people that believe in this other idea. That have a plan of pulling us out of this, this you know, just meaningless cycle of debt and poverty and exhaustion that we're constantly in. But that's what the mainstream looks at it as. The mainstream looks at it as like, I mean, can you believe it? Can you believe it? Yeah, we can. We can. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys for checking out that video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up uh, and uh, hit that share button. Share it out to uh, a friend, share it out to an enemy, share it out to anybody you think would enjoy content like this. Uh, content like this doesn't get, uh, often get shown to a lot of people because it's controversial material. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, I really depend on, on people liking and sharing it, uh, it with friends, with groups, with people that are going to appreciate something like this or get something new out of this. And, and please make sure that you are uh, liked and subscribed to my page, to my channel, um, because sometimes they, uh, uh, they, they remove people uh, or, they, or they just don't show it to people that are even subscribed. So just double check to make sure that you are. Uh, and uh, uh, I have live stand-up comedy dates uh, if you like the content that I put out, the videos that I'm putting out, uh, I talk a lot about the sub similar subject matters in my live stand-up comedy show. A lot about organized religion, uh, historical anecdotes, competition, late-stage capitalism, stuff like that. So, uh, worker rights, uh, you know, d taking Jeff Bezos down a couple pegs, 
Uh, and uh, if you want to come see me perform live stand-up comedy, uh, I am going to be in uh, Houston, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, Des Moines, Iowa. We just added Des Moines, Iowa to this tour. Uh, Moline, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana, and much, much more. Uh, I'm going to be touring uh, all over the country, including uh, doing dates with my good friend Lee Camp, who has released his brand new book and is doing a book release and stand-up comedy tour that I have uh, the honor and privilege of opening uh, up for. Uh, so go, uh, go, go, go! Check out Lee. Lee's tour schedule as well because I'll be on tour with him. Uh, we're coming to uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta. We're going all over the place. Uh, dates are available on my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Grab your tickets, RSVP to these events, come hang out with us. Uh, and uh, you can also become a patron uh, over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. That helps the quality and quantity of these videos and helps me put out more content more regularly, helps me uh, be on tour uh, more concisely, uh, more, uh, uh, more smartly. Smartly, is that a word? I don't know if that is, but it, it, it helps me get out uh, on the road a lot more and hit different parts of the, the, the country that I don't, uh, regularly get to hit, so uh, I can build I can build tours uh, smarter and, and uh, better than I am now. And, and I and, and, and I, I appreciate all the people that have already become uh, patrons. Um, and uh, another way you can become a sustaining member is via Bandcamp by becoming a uh, a subscriber and a follower on Bandcamp, which gets you uh, collections of stand up unreleased to the public which includes storytelling shows, which includes shows where I, you know, rift a bunch of material uh, with uh, uh, yeah, collections with material that never made it on an album, early versions of uh, my, my shows, fringe festival versions of my shows uh, that can be slightly different than the final cut uh, of uh, all the material that I put out. And you can also contribute directly on my website. So if you follow this video on my website, if that's where you watch this video you can you'll probably see a little orange button uh, and if you click that you can become a sustaining member directly on my website once again that's ramen noodles comedy.com that's r-a-m-a-n noodles comedy.com thank you guys so much for tuning in i really really appreciate you guys watching i really really appreciate everybody that subscribed i really appreciate all the people that are sharing these videos um, get getting the word out about them, coming to the live stand-up comedy shows, uh, and hanging out and getting weird and esoteric after the shows. I really appreciate you guys a whole lot. It means a whole bunch is to me uh, that you guys are, are, are supportive of what I'm doing. Uh, but till the next video, uh, we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.